In this video, I'm going to talk about the many problems surrounding histamine intolerance and leaky gut. I'll also explain why the health of your gut is so critical to histamine and mast cell activation disorders. I'll also talk about LPS toxins, what they are, what they do in our bodies, and how this leaky gut LPS toxin overload is connected to histamine and mast cell activation. I'll talk about some of the overlooked symptoms of a leaky gut that every person struggling with histamine intolerance needs to familiarize themselves with. This is gonna be a great video. You're gonna learn a ton of information. And if you watch this video all the way to the end, I promise you're gonna pick up some practical tips that you can implement to help yourself get well. Now, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and I wanna welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you have questions about today's video, make sure that you drop me uh, a uh, your comments or your questions in the section below. And again, I'll do my best to answer those questions or at least point you in a direction where I may have already covered that topic. Now, as a reminder, at the end of this video, make sure to check out the description box uh, because that's an area where I typically will put more information for those of you who want uh, more in-depth uh, content regarding the, that video. And a lot of people miss that area. So again, it can be a very, very important area when you're looking for more in-depth uh, content. All right, well, let's get started here with some of the things you should know about histamine intolerance and its connection it has to leaky gut. First off, what kind of symptoms make me think that a patient may have a leaky gut that's tied into mast cell activation or histamine intolerance? So again, these are the things that I want you to be on the lookout for. This may be a patient, or maybe it's you, who can't eat anything. You have multiple food sensitivities, multiple chemical sensitivities. Might be a patient with severe fatigue, or might be a woman who has severe headaches and migraines that get worse around ovulation when those estrogen levels are peaking. It might be a woman with severe menstrual cramps. We know that estrogen receptors are found throughout the brain and throughout the uterus, and that excess histamine can cause more uh, uterine contractions. Bloating abdominal pain is another symptom of a leaky gut, uh, as well as skin rashes and hives. So again, those are some of the lesser known symptoms of a leaky gut. Then there are the symptoms that you might be more familiar with when it comes to leaky gut. Joint pain, anxiety, depression, low energy. As a general reminder, histamine intolerance is caused by a problem with the DAO, diamine oxidase, and HNMT enzyme. This is the, these are the enzymes that help break down histamine. This enzyme is made by the kidneys, the thymus, and the intestinal uh, cells in the small intestine. And it's constantly being released from the intestinal mucosal lining into the gut, into blood circulation during digestion. HNMT, on the other hand, this is another enzyme, but this breaks down histamine actually within the cells, which is why it's called intracellular. Now, here's why the gut is such an intricate piece of this puzzle. There are several gastrointestinal diseases whereby these DAO-producing enterocytes are damaged. If you already know that you have these diseases or these syndromes, you could almost guarantee that they are contributing to your histamine intolerance and MSAS. So what are these gut disorders that contribute to histamine intolerance? Well, we've already been talking about one of them, which is this leaky gut, but there are others. Candida overgrowth, which is yeast, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, inflammatory bowel diseases like celiac, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis. These gut issues all have the potential to damage these DAO producing cells. And of course, the more damage to the DAO producing enterocytes, the more histamine accumulation we develop. And another cause is anything that drives an IgE allergic reaction. And that's because mast cells are activated by IgE. This is where your doctor needs to investigate because food, food isn't the only cause of, of an IgE reaction or even a CD4, uh, an elevation of a CD4 count. That means Lyme disease, mold, parasites, Th2 autoimmune diseases, think lupus, asthma, uh, Graves disease. If you struggle with some of these problems, and again, it's not uncommon to struggle with more than one of these gut diseases, it's going to be very, very critical that you address each of these problems. It's not as simple as going on a low histamine diet and taking stinging nettle and quercetin as supplements. And that's because there's many things that cause this histamine bucket to overflow. And that's what your functional medicine doctor really needs to tackle and understand. Your histamine symptoms may never improve on a low histamine diet but it's not because your low histamine diet didn't work. It's because your diet is not the only thing filling up your histamine bucket. There are many layers. There are many moving parts to mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerance. And diet is only one piece. So let's spend a little bit more time talking about this leaky gut and this histamine intolerance connection. Because for those of you who are new here, inside our bellies, we have an extensive intestinal lining covering more than 4,000 square feet of surface area. I want you to think about that in relationship to the size of a house. Imagine a 4,000 square foot house. That's a pretty nice home. And that's how much surface area is in your gut. 
And here's the thing, when working properly, it forms a very nice tight barrier that controls what gets absorbed and what can get into the bloodstream. So what get, can get in and what gets blocked, a very smart system. But an unhealthy gut lining, as in the case of a leaky gut, may have these cracks and holes. And these holes and cracks allow things like partially digested food, medications, toxins, heavy metals, mold, to penetrate the tissues and activate our immune system defenses. But that's not all. They also have the ability to damage those DAO producing cells. It also can change the gut flora. Again, those good bacteria and bad bacteria in the gut. And that of course can lead to problems like elevated levels of histamine in the digestive tract and beyond. Now, some of the bacteria in our gut are histamine producing bacteria and some are histamine degrading. And this is why some people need to be very, very careful with certain probiotics. Not everybody uh, has this issue, but people with histamine intolerance can be very sensitive to probiotics. And I wrote an entire article on that. And again, I'll leave that in the description for those of you who want to know more about it. For some people, taking the wrong probiotic will not only flare up your mast cells, but you can also make your small intestinal bacterial overgrowth worse. And so you can see this can become a vicious cycle. Another thing worth considering is that when you have a leaky gut and histamine intolerance are again, LPS bacterial toxins. And these are gram negative bacteria. These are toxins made by gram negative bacteria. And they can elicit a very, very strong immune system response, which in turn can damage the intestinal lining leading to a leaky gut. And I often see these elevated uh, LPS toxins with people that have autoimmune diseases, as well as those patients who have MCS and histamine intolerance. Now let's take a look at an example. Uh, this is a test I ran on a patient this patient had uh, uh, taken my histamine intolerance quiz and my leaky gut quiz on my website. She had a lot of symptoms. Uh, and after further discussion and review, we had just become very highly suspicious that a leaky gut was contributing to her mast cell. We tested her and as you can see on this test, what we found were antibodies against LPS and other structures indicating that in fact, she did have a leaky gut that was causing some of her MCAS symptoms. Now LPS stands for lipopolysaccharide. Again, these are large molecules that are found in gram negative bacteria. They're endotoxins that strongly activate our innate immune system and that can drive inflammation. When we detect these antibodies against LPS, uh, we know that these endotoxins are infiltrating the, the gut and they're infiltrating potentially the bloodstream. And once in the bloodstream, these endotoxins wreak havoc on the body. But at the level of the intestines and for the purpose of today's video, these LPS toxins directly damage the epithelial lining. That causes mast cells to release histamine. That causes toxins to get dumped into our bloodstream, triggering again, systemic immune challenges. Number three, it triggers massive inflammation inside the gut. So again, this is how a leaky gut causes histamine intolerance. Now, if you think this is happening to you, head over to my website, take my leaky gut quiz, my histamine intolerance MCH quiz to assess your risk. The last thing I wanna cover in this video uh, for you today, because I like being thorough, are some of the causes of a leaky gut. If you do have a leaky gut that's causing histamine intolerance, it's going to be very important that you find out what might be causing this leaky gut. There are no leaky gut protocols that are right for everyone. Having tested positive for a leaky gut itself doesn't tell us how you fix it, okay? We still need to run tests in order to understand what's causing the leaky gut. So as I go through some of these most common causes of a leaky gut, again, make a mental check by asking yourself how relevant, how applicable these potential causes may be to you. So these are some of the causes um, of a leaky gut. Number one is diet. Do you consume alcohol, gluten, and sugar? Do you eat a lot of processed foods? Do you drink dairy? Do you eat a lot of lectins, which are found in nuts and seeds? Because again, these can be very inflammatory. Do you have a history of traveling to third world countries? Have you had a recent bout of food poisoning? Do you have a history of infections, things like bacterial overgrowth? Have you been diagnosed with yeast or candida? Um, have you been told that you have a parasite or H. pylori? Not do you think, but have you been tested for these things? Have you had exposure to mycotoxins or mold? Uh, do you use antiacids on a regular basis or do you take antidepressants or corticosteroids? Do you have symptoms of low stomach acid? Do you take the pill, right, if you're a woman? Another major factor for leaky gut is stress. Under stress, our adrenal glands increase a hormone called cortisol. If your cortisol levels remain elevated for too long, this cortisol begins to break down the tight junctions in the gut, which cause those holes and cracks. This then leads to inflammation, again, leaky gut. Another common culprit uh, connected to histamine intolerance is uh, hormones, right? You can watch an entire video dedicated to the histamine hormone connection that I did. I also did an entire video on the connection between adrenal hormones, stress hormones, and histamine intolerance. 
So in some cases, depending on the cause, you can correct this histamine intolerance, MCS, by addressing leaky gut, by addressing the adrenals, by addressing your hormones. But keep in mind, there's no one singular reason for why you're suffering with this histamine intolerance or even a leaky gut. And this is why it never surprises me when I have a patient says, who says to me, Dr. Hagmeyer, um, I, I you know, went on a low histamine diet. I've been taking this DAO enzyme, this stinging nettle, this quercetin, but it didn't work for me. Well, of course it didn't work for you. Your, perce your perception, your expectations of what's causing your problem is limited to just diet and a few supplements. There are many things that are filling up your histamine bucket, and that's what needs to be identified and then addressed. You may be doing a great job following some doctor's low histamine uh, diet or their leaky gut diet, but if the underlying cause is this leaky gut, you're not going to get better. Or, or if you do, by some long shot, your symptoms improve a bit, they're gonna come back once again because your bucket is just filling up. So my best recommendation, if you're still suffering, at some point, you're gonna need more in-depth testing to find out what the root cause of your symptoms are and what's causing your histamine bucket to overflow. And it might be a leaky gut, it might be your hormones. All right, so there you go. I hope you found a lot of uh, useful information in today's video. Again, don't forget to check out the, the, the link in the description box that I will leave. If you wanna consult my practice or you're interested in having me review your case, visit my website and look for the Become a Patient button. Um, if you want more information, uh, I recommend that you watch this video next.